Hello, my name is Zena Humani. I'm a PhD student at ONS de Lyon, France. I will present a data-driven service discovery framework based on service profile matching. This work is a collaboration between the LIP Laboratory at ONS de Lyon and the Rutgers Discovery Informatics Institute at Rutgers University in New Jersey, USA. Service discovery is the process of regaining a service on the network to allow the communication between services without a manual intervention. Before, to allow this communication, different techniques were used, such as the hard-coded IP and the DNS server. These techniques do not provide a real-time view of the system, and they show scalability and resiliency issues. The current service discovery technique has a client registry pattern, providing an automatable scaling and a flexible health checking. It can be summarized in two steps. The client, who is the data provider, contacts the database of the system to discover a service that they know exists, but without knowing its location. Then after receiving the location, the client interacts with the service. Emerging cloud and edge computing systems have different characteristics. Data producers and data consumers are decoupled. The services are not created by the same entity, so they are not designed to work together automatically. Also, most systems deal with services offering the same functionality, but with different resolution and quality of service guarantees. In addition, these systems are considered as dynamic, so new services can be frequently added to the system and others can be continuously removed. To integrate the service discovery mechanism into the current systems, a set of real-time service discovery framework exists in the literature, such as the widely used ETCD and Apache Zookeeper. These frameworks are considered as goal-based framework, where the discovery clients are pre-configured in a way to fulfill the system goal. Some other characteristics of these frameworks is that they use a specific service description model to register the available services in the databases. This model contains network configuration of the service and its identifier. The discovery of registered service is based on these identifiers. However, the current data-driven systems highlight limitations of these discovery frameworks. So looking up a service using its identifier in such systems has many issues. First, it will prevent the clients from discovering the new functionalities that have been developed and they might look up for services that do not exist anymore or do not provide anymore the expected performance. In addition, some data producers and data consumers do not have explicit identifiers, such as in IoT systems, which makes them undiscoverable using the current discovery strategy. These systems deal with changing demands and require a quality of service guarantee. So maintaining the quality of service during discovery is essential, but unfortunately is not considered in the literature. So to overcome these issues, in this work, we aim to present a discovery framework that uses mainly the data characteristics instead of the services identifiers to look up the available services, and it maintains a quality of service even with an excessive load. So in this presentation, I will present the different steps to accomplish the data-driven service discovery. Then I will present the adaptation scheme that consists of the management algorithms and the management architecture we implemented to maintain the system quality of service. And I will end this presentation with the experiments and the results. So creating the service discovery mechanism consists of three steps. First, as we aim to integrate data and discovery, we started by creating a new data-centric models to use in the registration process. We then designed a new communication strategy that benefits from the design profiles to apply the data-driven discovery. As the complexity of infrastructure grows, there was a need to reduce the number of components implicated in the discovery process and prevents them from causing a potential degradation of the system performance. To this end, we created a data-driven architecture that classifies services based on the data supported. These steps will be detailed in the next slides. 
The new data-centric description for services contains not only the basic service properties as in the existing discovery framework, but also additional information concerning the data product they work on and the performance they provide. The example in this slide is for an image crop service. The basic service properties contains information such as the network location, the protocol, the request parameters. The data properties indicate the input and the output data type, which is in this example an image, as well as the image format, dimension, and other data-related informations. The last part of the service profile is the information concerning the service performance, such as the uptime and the request per second. In our work, the data input type, the data characteristics, and the measured performance are considered as the main properties in the service profiles. So during the discovery process, if these properties match exactly the client's requirements, the service's data models are considered as matching profiles. The communication strategy to accomplish the discovery is between the data provider and the system registry where all the profiles are registered. And all the communications between these two components are managed by an API gateway. This component can be responsible for functionalities such as data and protocol transformation, load balancing, and handling failures. The data provider and the system are independent. So in order to use the deployed services, the client initiates the discovery process by sending its data characteristics to the registry. The registry matches the client data with the main properties in the service profiles, then returns the name of the matching services. This step corresponds to the step two in the slide. Later, the client sends its second request containing the chosen functionality with extra information about the data. So at this point in step four, the registry will filter the matching list and returns to the client only the profiles matching all of the requirements. The last step in this strategy consists of selecting the instance with the preferred performance and contacts the service directly. To prevent these components implicated in the discovery process from causing a potential degradation of the system performance, our architecture consists of creating an API gateway for each type of data. This gateway is only responsible for services that work on this specific data type. So an API gateway image, for example, will only manage the services that work on the data of type image. This gateway is connected to a database that only contains the descriptions of the services managed by this API. And the entry point of our architecture is a zone manager. It will receive all the incoming client's requests, analyze them, and then forward them to the right gateway depending on the client's data. So we use in this architecture the peer-to-peer -peer model that will connect the zone managers together. This model helps us create a scalable data-driven architecture that can cover a larger geographical area. So with this architecture and the communication strategy, the complete data-driven discovery will be as follows. So the first request containing the client data type will be sent to the zone manager. The zone manager will forward this request to the gateway responsible of this data. And the gateway, on the other hand, will contact its registry where all the services working on this data are registered. The registry applies the profile matching and returns the result via the same path. The same scenario happens with the second discovery request of the client in the discovery approach. Using this architecture for our discovery approach reduces the number of transmitted messages in the system by forwarding the client's request directly to the appropriate gateway and service registry. In addition, Creating an API gateway for each supported data type reduces the number of requests to be processed by this component. So an API gateway becomes responsible for a single category instead of all the deployed microservices. This reduces the performance degradation in this component. To implement and deploy this architecture, we used the microservices architectural style and Istio project. So microservices is a service-based pattern that consists of creating applications as a set of independent services that interact together using APIs. 
Each microservice is responsible for only one specific functionality and manages its own data source. We chose this architectural style as it's easy to deploy and monitor. Also, it is the architectural style that requires a discovery approach the most due to its heterogeneous and distributed functionalities. When the application becomes more and more complex with a larger number of microservices, managing and observing the microservices interaction become more challenging. For this reason, we used the Istio Service Mesh project. This project is launched by IBM, Google, and Lyft to secure, control, and observe the inter-services communications. Service Mesh is an infrastructure layer of interconnected proxies. So these proxies will be deployed next to the microservices. And as the image shows, all the communications between the microservices will pass through these proxies that will be responsible for translating, transmitting, and observing each network packet that flows to or from a microservice. These proxies are managed by a set of control services provided by Istio. Among the different available service mesh projects in the market, we chose Istio due to its performance and extensible features highlighted in different studies, also because of its proxy servers that provides a wide set of possible management operations. Our architecture deals with changing demands and various data products. So to maintain the system performance, even during excessive load, we designed an adaptation scheme that controls the deployed services by data type. Each supported data has a fixed threshold for the maximum number of concurrent requests. This adaptation scheme is based on three management algorithms. The scale-up algorithm is responsible for adjusting the capacity of the system by creating new instances of the requested data type when the fixed threshold is exceeded. When the load entering the system starts to decrease and the capacity of the system becomes higher than the system requirements, the scaled down algorithm will be triggered to remove the extra services instances and free the allocated resources. The last management algorithm is the load shedding algorithm. So it consists of rejecting the discovery requests in two cases. The first case is when an overload is detected, but there is no enough free resources for scaling the services. The second case is when new instances are already created, but they are not ready yet to execute requests. So in these two cases, rejecting requests will maintain the system availability. So with this management algorithms, our data-driven microservices architecture becomes as follows. So we organize services by group called DMG or data-driven microservices group. The services that belong to the same DMG are the services working on the same data type. We implemented the management algorithms in three independent services, scale down service, scale up service, and the controller service responsible for the load shedding algorithm. These management services are integrated in the discovery process. So when the client's discovery request reaches the API gateway, the gateway contacts first the controller service to check if the system can support more requests targeting services of the specified data type. If no more requests can be handled and there's no free resources, the controller service will stop the discovery process. However, if free resources exist, the controller will trigger the scale-up service to replicate new instances. We deployed this architecture on the large-scale distributed platform Grid 5000. This platform has eight sites in France with 38 clusters and a dedicated 10 gigabit per second backbone network. For our experiments, we reserved 27 nodes on the Dahu cluster in Grenoble. We deployed one single DMG containing a set of image processing microservices, and we set its threshold to 80 concurrent requests. We validated the system by evaluating the variation of three metrics. These metrics are the discovery response time, the percentage of accepted discovery requests, and the number of DMG instances. Our first experiment presents the variation of the first two metrics while sending a stable rate equal to 600 requests per second during 20 minutes. 
We can observe in the graph three phases. The first phase shows the baseline of one request per second. The discovery response time here is around one second, and the percentage of accepted requests is equal to 100%. Then we switch to 600 requests per second. As the existing DMG is unable to process all the incoming rate, the second phase of the graph shows that the average response time begins to increase, and in parallel, the system starts shedding load. This drop of the system performance triggers the scale-up algorithm that will start to replicate the targeted DMG to increase its capacity. Due to that, as the requests continue to arrive, the final phase in the graph shows a decrease in the average response time until it stabilizes around the value close to the baseline. And at the same time, the percentage of accepted requests rises respectively until it contains its peak of 100%. The second experiment targeted the number of DMG instances in the system. In this experiment, we switch to a dynamic distribution of load rather than a stable one. We aim with this experiment to evaluate the system scalability by presenting the variation of the number of DMG instances with the incoming load. So the load distribution will vary from 50 to 100, and then it returns to 50 requests per second. Each variation will last for about five minutes. At first, since the targeted DMG is unable to process all the incoming rate, the system triggers the scale-up algorithm to create new instances. So the graph shows the number of instances start to increase. Same when moving from 50 to 100 requests per second. Later, to show how the system reacts if the load decreases, we switch it back from 100 to 50 requests per second. As the incoming rate is now lower than the system capacity, the scale down algorithm is triggered to remove unnecessary DMG instances. So as the graph shows, the number of instances decreases respectively with a variation similar to the incoming rate. So in this work, we presented a standalone data-driven service discovery framework that allows data providers to discover the available services depending on their data while providing a quality of service guarantee. Results showed that the platform is able to maintain its response time around one second and the percentage of accepted requests at 100% when receiving excessive load. It was able to achieve that by adapting itself to the incoming load and keeping a sufficient number of DMG instances enough to process all the incoming requests. With these results, our framework can be useful for the current cloud and edge-based systems, such as, for example, the video analysis systems. It provides the developers with a discovery process able to deal with their dynamic environments, their changing users' demands, and the heterogeneous data, all that while guaranteeing a quality of service. And that's what I wanted to share with you. I appreciate you took the time to listen to the presentation. Thank you.